Did you know it said that women use an average of 20,000 words a day while men only speak around 7,000? Sounds about right, doesn't it? <laughs> and of those 20,000 words, I mean, we are all sinners, sinners saved by grace. So not every single word of the 20,000 are perfectly encouraging, perfectly lovely, perfectly patient, are they? Here's the deal. I've been following someone on social media for years who is one of the most encouraging bright lights out there. But there was a time in our life when she was not. And she is very honest about that up front. And I am so excited for this conversation where we're going to trade the lie that no filter is needed for the truth that we can use our words to be life-giving that will only build up others. Let's get into it. Here's the deal. On any given day, we think 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts. But get this, of those, let's say 50,000, 98% of them are the same ones from yesterday, which means we just keep thinking the same stuff over and over and over again, which is great if it's all true, all encouraging, lovely, praiseworthy. But with the father of the lies on the loose, out to steal your hope, kill your peace, and destroy your faith, my guess is they're not. I know you because I know me. Hi, I'm Heidi Lee Anderson, Christian author, cancer survivor, and social media content creator. And in every episode of the Trade a Lie for a Truth podcast, we're camping out on one thought and picking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to follow the voice of truth above all else. His name is Jesus. Because in his words, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You ready? Let's seize the free abundant life in Christ one thought at a time starting with this episode. Sarah Moliner is in the house. Okay, so to kick off every episode, I just love it. We are going to do two truths and a lie so we can get to know you a little bit better. You're going to okay. see, say three statements and I'm mm -hmm. going to try to guess which one is the lie. Are you ready? I'm ready. I have never been stung by a bee. Lucky, blessed, hashtag blessed, <laughs> hashtag blessed. <laughs> I have ridden a camel not once, but twice in my life. Whoa. Yes, okay. I know. Try, yeah, that try is... to stand up to that. Yeah. I don't I, know. I think that's more than the average <laughs> Joe. I don't like coffee, chocolate, tea, any of the three. Okay, this is tough, but now that you say that, I don't think I've ever seen you drink coffee on like stories. I'm gonna go with one is the lie. Yes, but, but you know what? Right? Yeah, you did get it right. Okay, you are so good. But I, I really thought the camel one might throw you off. You, um, the the, the world crazy travels. thing about the bee thing is the very first time I got stung by a bee was last year. In my life. I am 36 years old, and I only got stung by a bee at age 35. Well, that is amazing. Yeah. That feels yeah, good. I, I, got, yeah. I got stung last year in my eye, like oh, on the side. Oh. I was at the state fair and it was a moment where I felt my life flash before my eyes. I'm like, this <laughs> hurts so bad. <laughs> well, it is so fun to have you on Trade Alive for a Truth podcast. And if people aren't familiar with you, which if they aren't one of the 700,000 plus people that follow oh you gosh. on Instagram, they need to be. But would you be willing to share a little bit more about yourself if they don't know yet who you are? Yeah, I have been married to my husband, Tim, my hunk of a husband for 14 and a half years now. He just told me the other night laying in bed, he was like, can you believe that in five years we'll have known each other like half our lives? And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of that before, <laughs> which is the pretty The joys crazy. when you get older, right? Yeah, the joys when you get older and get married super young. So that was fun. But um, we have seven <laughs> kiddos. They range in ages 11 all the way down to baby. She's eight months old. That has been nothing we planned for, but everything we hoped for. So I hmm. love I love that. And we live in central Washington state. Also nothing I would have ever chosen, but you know what? It is home. I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it. Even though a lot of people say, you're just kidding. No, I really do love it. And we <laughs> just are so thankful to have like the best family support around us. We homeschool. Mm. We do a lot of things as a family and that's really our focus right now and hopefully in the long yeah. haul. So I love that. And you share more of your story about living in Washington in your book, Well Said, which you didn't even mention that you are now a public published author, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks. Look what I have right here. It's right here. Well said. Oh, Pretty man. impressive. Well, we're going to dive into that. Let's set the stage. It has said that women use an average of 20,000 words a day while men 
only speak 7,000. <laughs> that sounds about right, doesn't yes. it? What I love is I know you and both of us are chatterboxes by nature. So my guess is, I mean, we are like on the upper end of that 20,000. We probably exceeded <laughs> it by lunchtime, right? <laughs> so let's talk about those words because of those 20,000, I mean, we're all sinners, right? Sinners saved yes. by grace. So my guess Amen. is not every single one of those 20,000 words are always perfectly encouraging, not always perfectly loving or patient as much as we hope or wish. And here's the deal. I have followed Sarah on social media for years and years now, and she is by far one of the brightest lights out there. She is so encouraging. In fact, I will actually always remember the first time we crossed paths and true to form, it was because you hopped on stories and you told the whole social media world that if you are not following Heidi, you need to get your butt on over. I was like, I love this girl. This girl is awesome. But that was over five years ago. And I still remember why, because you built me up because that is just what you do. She just breathes life into our souls. And that's one of the things I just love so much about you. But what I found was so crazy when I read your book, actually, which is well said. And by the way, if you don't have a copy yet, my guess is by the end of the episode, you're going to want one. But I was <laughs> shocked to read right from the beginning, in particular with your husband, Tim, that you often found yourself sometimes critical or impatient and it overflowed into your words towards him. And that is just so hard to imagine. But I would love for you to share more maybe about that with us, whether it be a story or whatever helps put some flesh on this about how our words carry power. Does anything stick out? Yeah. I love that you put it really lightly because it was a lot worse than that, but we'll go with your version. Well, I like your version. I'm just kidding. My version brings the redemption. Your version sounds a lot better. Anyway, um, <laughs> critical would be putting it lightly. You know, I said, I love where I live. I love central Washington and I love my home. I did not always love my home. And so I think that's the biggest thing, you know, you get married. Well, at least, you know, for those of us that are married or if you're not like, this is how it looked for me. I got yeah. married, man of my dreams. I had prayed about this. I had like, Lord had given me words. I had like prayed over those words and all of a sudden like dropped in my lap and I'm like, ah, like, thank you, Jesus. It didn't quite feel like that, but it, you know, it did in some senses. And we were like, fast and furious, Twitter pated, in love, engaged, got married. It all happened like, you know, within a year's time. And I just had these ideas like, okay, this is happening, Lord. This is happening exactly how you like are planning it. It's perfect. It's wonderful. And then all of a sudden you find, uh, hopefully not too quickly, but I found somewhat quickly that it wasn't all that I had thought in my head. Yes. And not just because you're young and in love and, you know, it, I think it can happen at any stage of life. And it just hit me. And instead of pivoting and being able to say like, okay, well, like, that's no yeah. big deal. That's not a redhead's yeah. personality. You know, Heidi, like, no, we don't, just, we don't just let things go. I was <laughs> like, I don't like it. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like that. And I don't like this. And I'm going to make that known. I'm going to just let them know I don't like that. And so fast forward, but through a series of just that not liking things and that discontentment and that kind of taking root in your heart and bitterness, it can flesh out in a lot of ways. And for me, it fleshed out in my words and they were not just unkind and critical, but they became a constant nagging and a constant, I don't like this and a constant, I'd rather have this and a constant so much so to where, you know, I grew up in a Christian home. I know the language. I know yeah. the things I could make it look good on the outside. No one knew because I would just mm. do this behind closed doors, like nag, nag, chip, mm. chip away. And, you know, then on the other side, I was like, we're fine. We're happy. I have my yeah. husband, like we've got this beautiful marriage and it just, yeah. the two didn't mesh. Um, not to say there wasn't love and joy. There was lots of those moments too, but For you sure. know, it became more overwhelming as time went on. And that's super candid. It's like, God has given us these feelings, right? Mm -hmm. And some, they're yeah. super great. Like it's fun to be in love. <laughs> It is fun to be filled with joy. But man, yeah. when we are frustrated, when we are disappointed, and when we're angry, it can yeah. come out. But I love how you put it. And I'm quoting straight out of your book where you put our emotions can control everything in our lives. And however our feelings blow in, I mean, they can blow out just the same. And so when we feel dissatisfaction or mm -hmm. resentment, envy, I mean, if not dealt with really healthily with the Lord, it can easily spew out onto others. I think we've all 
all been there. But before we go too deep there, let's pause and circle back to what the Bible says, right? Because that's yeah. how we trade a lie for a truth is the only way we demolish yeah. these strongholds in our life is when we flip open to the word of God. Because Jesus mm -hmm. said, it's only when we know the truth that we mm -hmm. are set free. And I love that Ephesians 6 talks about how God's word is the sword of the spirit. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what demolishes those strongholds. And so we are demolishing the lie that no filter is needed, that we can verbally process all we want because we have these feelings and it yeah. is our right that we make our truth known. But literally, let's go back to the very beginning in Genesis 1 when God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, he spoke it all into being. All he had to do yeah. was say, let there be and there was. And so let's talk about that. I mean, he could have said nothing. You said that in your book. <laughs> yeah. He could have done some other action yeah. to yeah. create, wave your hands in the air, but he fashioned it with words. So yeah. I'd love to hear from you. Like, how does that show us as his image bearers, like how we should use our words? I think the interesting thing, and I talk about this with my boys all the time is like, God had a choice. Like he's God, he could have done whatever he wanted. Right. And the fact right? that everything he does is with intention means yeah. that the fact that he chose to speak was obviously yeah. with intention as well. And it set the stage for yeah. us. And so if we mm -hmm. are meant to be image bearers of Christ, if we're meant to reflect his light, if we're meant to be like him more, and we know the word and pair that with knowing the word, because I'm speaking to people like know the word, I did know the word, yeah. then <laughs> our obvious choice should be to reflect his words, you know, yeah. if we know him deeply. And so I think it's easy to say almost, I'm looking at myself and saying, yeah, I grew up a Christian. Yeah, I knew the word. Yeah, I knew a bunch of songs. I could whip them out to you. You know, I remember all the verses yes. by song. But did I really know God's character? Did I hmm. really know him truly enough to be able to reflect him? Or maybe the question isn't even that. Maybe you do know him and maybe you're just making an obvious choice because I think that was part of it too, that yeah. in my discontentment, I was just making a choice. I mean, I could have chosen to go a different direction. Like we do this every day. We have choices every single day. And I could have. And so what is it that keeps us down, that keeps us making that and, and I personally believe it's because that renewing and that transforming that we learn about in Romans, has it actually happened? Has our heart been cleaned mm -hmm. out? I can, you know, lead a horse to water. I can train a nurse yeah. to do the thing. I can do all the, you know, I can teach yeah. my kids a habit, but is their heart changing? And for me, <laughs> I know that, you know, I was able to speak all the things, do all the things and I could flip it like a switch because I don't truly believe that early on that heart change was there and that renewing and that transforming was there. I saw that moment where like, like I did change and things did take a turn for the better. I mean, there was a lot more in it than that, but yeah. there was for sure something that happened in my heart as well that caused mm -hmm. me to not want to go back into that cycle of sin, but to instead create a new cycle where Jesus was involved and he was, you know, a part of me. I love that because it is a good reminder for us as we're talking to people that we actually do have a choice what comes out of our mouth, yeah. right? Like we can yeah. pause a hot minute and consider what we're thinking before we just open our mouths and spew it out. And Proverbs 18, 21 says death and life yeah. are in the power of the tongue. And I love how you said that in your book, chapter two, how you were like, it is so freeing to find real joy yes. in speaking life giving words. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. yeah, it does feel good to speak life to others. But yeah. again, like you said, we have that choice. When Paul wrote to the Ephesians, I always think of that when he said, do not let any unwholesome talk come mm. out of your mouth. As in, we have a choice. We can let it in or do not let, mm. but he says only what is helpful for building others up according mm -hmm. to their needs. Why? Amen. So it may benefit those who listen. How would you say, like, how do we start making that shift? What helped you to start making that when it's become like a habit to do the opposite? Yeah. Well, you can break a habit. You can form a habit. You can do it all. Yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest shift starts with forgiveness and a repenting yeah. heart, because that's the thing. Our culture wants to just say like, oh, we have a choice, but this feels good in the moment. Like, so I'm just going <laughs> to say this in the moment. And, you know, God says like, like, I want you to have a repentant heart. I want you to seek forgiveness because I want that change to happen inside of you so that you don't go back to what you are. Yeah. I mean, he's talking to the woman who was about to be stoned because she was a harlot and all the things and he's drawing the line mm -hmm. in the sand and people are like, yeah, woman empowerment. He's standing up for a blah, you know, yeah. and you forget those last five words that say go and sin no more. And yeah. without those, we're just all about empowerment. We're not about mm. heart change. And so I think the biggest thing is that we have to start with that repentant heart. We have to say not only to the person that we cause the hurt with, yes, 
but also to the Lord whose heart is grieved even more at what he hears and what he sees. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to do both and we have to be willing to do both. And my personal thing with forgiveness and apologies, this is like my personal thing as a mother, as a person, I just think it's so helpful to be accountable for what you said and to be accountable in the sense that you say it. Like, I am sorry Mm -hmm. for saying unkind, insert all unkind things that I said. That's not easy. And you know why it's not easy? Because when we repeat it back to ourselves, it's yucky. It does not sound good. And you're suddenly like, oh, like it is a gut punch of like, I said that. Yes, I did. And so Hmm. I think when we can almost take it on ourselves, not in a shameful way, because God is not a God of shame, but when we can take it on ourselves in a way of like, we need to feel the weight of that yuckiness and feel the weight of that sin. Again, Hmm. it makes us not want to go back into that cycle and we're more ready and we're more willing to change and move forward in what the Lord has for us. It starts with a heart change. Like you said, with Jesus, what's interesting is if you flip over to John, I mean, it's Jesus actually described as the word, right? And Mm -hmm. and it runs parallel to Genesis one, when we read in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And when I was reading more about this, I mean, that Greek word um, is logos Mm. that describes Jesus. It's translating to the word that Jesus is actually God's spoken word. He's the Mm -hmm. Visible image of, of the invisible God, mm-hmm. like Colossians 1.15 says. And to the Greeks, what I was studying was it was logos was thought of like as a bridge between God and the material world. Like, mm-hmm. so that our words are actually similar when you get that mental picture that they're actually a bridge between our internal thoughts and feelings to like what's spoken and brought into action in our world. And you quote Proverbs 13.3 in your book. Mm-hmm. It says, those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak mm-hmm. right Ashley will come to ruin. Could you break that down a little bit for us? Like what practically do you do Mm -hmm. when you find yourself like angry or impatient or stressed? Maybe when you're homeschooling or in your work? I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I'd be up for some helpful tips. (laughs) I, it's so funny because obviously, um, you know, you know how different things like trip our trigger, trip our brain into like, yes, that works for me. So I'll tell you what works for me. And some of the things I've implemented, even as soon as lately in my motherhood, one of the things Tim said to me that was so interesting when we were kind of walking out this forgiveness and like walking into like new patterns and new habits was he said two things. He said, one, if you were on video, you probably wouldn't like what you saw. Ironic because Mm. we're now on social media. And I was like, oh, the irony. But two, he said, if I said that to you, you would be wanting to like uppercut me and like walk out the door. And I was like, yeah, that's not a lie. So those two things have kind of stuck. And they're, those are kind of like my brain things that have stuck. Like I just had to think of almost like worst case scenario, like what can I do in my brain that causes my brain to pause and think like, no, what would that look like on video? No. What would that look like? If he said it to me, I for sure wouldn't like it. And so though that's kind of like my first, like my first pause, like my first barrier of like stopping. The Mm -hmm. second thing is I would practice in the mirror because I feel like, I mean, practice makes better. Right. So like, honestly, I'm really good with words but I'm really good with letting my words run as well. And so there would be times when I would like, you know, you'd, I'd almost know that I was getting worked up. And so I would practice ahead of time, like things I would say, like, I know I'm going to say something I'm not, I'm going to regret. So I'm going to stop and we're going to take a break. And that leads me into the next Hmm. one, which was taking a break. And that was actually Tim's suggestion. And that's something we still do to this day. And now I've like implemented it into my parenting is just this little two minute timeout. Like Tim would recognize, and I gave him permission. It was like a, you know, we came together and said like, how can we do this? Like I need help. And I was willing to accept that. And he said like, I feel like I can just see it in you. I feel like I can see when you're getting like worked up and ready. And he was like, could we, when I see that, could I just say like, you know what? let's take a break. Hmm. And like, I'm just going to go to a different room. I'm going to go to a different area of the house. I'll step outside if Mm -hmm. I need to. And we're just going to stop because obviously this is going to go nowhere well. Hmm. And so he would literally do that. And suddenly what happened is I was like, I don't, I don't want you to leave. Like, I don't want my behavior to be so bad that you can't even like stay in the same room as me to have a conversation. And so that caused me to start wanting to do a heart change in myself and like be able to control my feelings to the point where I could say like, no, I am an adult human being and I am capable (laughs) of controlling myself to have a conversation so that you can stay in the room and we don't have to get (laughs) so out of control that you Mm -hmm. have to leave. Like that's, I don't want to get to that point. And in my parenting, I feel like now that translates well, like 
if there's a consequence that needs to happen or some talk that needs to happen with my children, one of the yeah. things that was like my go-to and they know it. And I think they love it because it gives them a sense of like, almost like a safety net. Like mom loves me. Sure. So she's doing this is I'll say like, you know, what? I want you to go back to my room. I want you to wait there. I'll be back there in two minutes. And hmm. that two minute length of time of me walking to yeah. the back of the house is yeah. enough for me to like, as I'm walking, it's almost like I'm fleshing out, Lord, help me. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, calm me down. Lord, yeah. this is not, I'm not going to do this emotion filled. I want to get to the heart of what's happening. And by the time mm -hmm. I feel like I get back there, not only am I ready, but you can almost see the change almost in them that they're ready. They've had a minute to sit yeah. back and say, okay, what just happened? Why am I here? And then we're yeah. able to have a better conversation about that. And dare I say like, not just better, but like richer, more rooted in the Lord. And the outcome yeah. is, is truly that heart change that we're talking about. And you know what, when you say that, it brings me back to my childhood because my mom would have me go and wait. And that was almost punishment enough for me yeah. to sit there with my own thoughts. And the conviction was there, you know, like I felt, <laughs> I was a little bad. And so when my mom or dad came in, I'm like, please, I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to do yes. that again. And yeah. it was good. It's good to have that time. I've never thought of that with my kids now. Yeah. I'm like, I need to carry that forward. That's good. Okay. I have okay. to tell you one thing like, real quick yeah. though. The best part you just said when you were a kid. So my parents, they did some sort of this too. And I remember yeah. this is like such a Christian kid thing to do. Probably they'd be like, go to your room and we're going to come, you know, or go wherever. And we're going to come discipline you in a minute or like, we'll discipline when we get home. And I remember going up to the room and I would just grasp at like whatever worship song I thought I knew. And I thought like that if I just worshiped, maybe by the time they got there, the discipline would be less. And so yes. I would sit there like, Imagine as an eight year old, like the only worship song you know is like silver and gold have yes. I none, but such as oh, I have given. Not even a worship song, but totally. here I am, like praying. Peter and John went to pray. I hope my mom <laughs> and dad forget on the way. So, anyway, I just had to throw that out there. That is amazing. I probably pulled out some Veggie Tail clips. Like, ooh, That's exactly. Was, oh, I love it. Okay. Well, I want to shift gears because I am a sucker for any personality quiz. So, literally, <laughs> when I open your book, I mean, really, it's fun for me to find out. Like, I'm a lot in on the animal grid. Have you taken that yet? Oh, okay, you need you need to go online and look up the animal grid. Okay, well, what about string finders? Have you taken string finders? No. Oh my word, Sarah. Okay. Well, anyways, even when I was at a girl's trip this last weekend, I made us all sit down and like, we're going to do the test to find out our colors, to find out what season we're in. Oh, I have I'm heard of that one. I have heard okay. of that. Yeah. Well, I'm a warm spring. I'm wondering if that means you are too, because we're similar I, skin maybe. and hair. I don't know. I'm going right. to have to go take that one. If so, emerald green would look really em good. Well, that totally makes sense. But Thank okay. you. But, okay. but I totally geeked out when you asked in your book, do you know your communication gifting? Because I was like, no, but, but now I want to. So would you mind just breaking down a few of them that you mentioned? Yeah, I actually brought my book along because you know how like you write a Yay. book, you do know, and you forget, oh, yeah. you know, you forget something. You're like, did yes. I say that? Wow, I did say yes. that. So that I did bring good. a book and I opened it up because I don't want to forget and pretend like I don't know what I wrote, but I do. I think there's all different kinds of people and like how we communicate. I think it's so important to know that whatever bent you have, it can be bent in terms of communication. And so like, if you're an encourager, okay. I mean, that's an obvious one. That's like a word yeah. one. Like you are an encourager. Everyone knows what that is. You build people up with your words, but I feel like then you can look at people who are like, I made this one up in my book. It's called show upper. Totally Love it. That. Thought it went with the book. I have this friend and she just shows up and I mean, we can communicate with words. Yes. But like we can yeah. communicate with body language. We can communicate with our actions. We can communicate and all sorts of ways and her showing up intentionally at different moments in my life at different periods when I really needed it like that communicated something to me that spoke something to me so like maybe there are some people who are like show up or yeah that actually makes yeah. sense like that is me and then there are people hmm. who are um prayers I mean that's an obvious one maybe you're not going out and you're not like I had an encouraging word for you like I don't yes. but maybe you're the one who's like on your hands and knees. And you're like, man, I just felt like the Lord yeah. press on me to pray for you hmm. in this situation. I spent some time. Maybe they never know that you did. Maybe you yeah. just know that you did and that's okay. And I just think sometimes people are prayers. Then there's like teachers, which Heidi, I feel like you are like so good at being a teacher. Like you just know cool. the word, you have the word deep in your heart and you're able to communicate that in a really special way that people hmm. get it. And they're like, wow, like I didn't grasp that concept before I listened to Heidi. And now I grasp hmm. that concept. And like, that was just made real and alive to me. And so I'm just saying like, I feel like that's one of your Look at that encouragement show up, your encouragement, <laughs> communication but style. So many, I think there was about seven that I put in there. You might've said that seven that I put in there. And I just feel like it is important because then it helps us know. And it also 
also helps us be built up in that, like when we do know, we're able to almost walk more confidently in that and go out and say like, okay, I know that I am a show up or so like this week, yeah. how can I show up for someone? How hmm. can I do that? Now, please hear me. Like, it doesn't have to be like some extravagant gift. Like I think yeah. you, you know, but just showing up and doing those things. I, it was so interesting. A gal just wrote me on Instagram. I always like my friends, you know, all my Instagram yeah. friends, I reference them totally. as my friends. She was like, you prayed about being almost like a show up this week. And she's like, so yeah. funny. I was like, yes, Lord, like speak to me in that. Show me how I can show up for someone. Wouldn't oh. you know it? My friend who's pregnant went into labor the next day. All her family's out of town, like gone right now. And she was like, how can I help you? And she was like, I need someone to watch my kid. And she's like, done. And she was like, Hmm. but that quickly, like I prayed about it. And the next day there was like a need and I was able to fill that need. So when we know that it's almost like we're able to step in those situations very easily and very quickly without even hesitation, because we know who we are and we know how we can walk that out. And the Lord gives us opportunities to do that. I love that. Cause even last week, someone reached out at our church said, can you teach at Awana? And I was like, you know what? I can't watch kids. Like I can't be in the nursery very well. It's not my gift, but teaching. All right, give me that script and I will get up there. So I agree when you know your gifting, it does help you step into those things that maybe God has put in front. Like this is what you should take up. on. And I think it also helps you step out of the things that maybe aren't your strength. Cause like, I'm not like, I don't look at myself as a teacher. So if someone was like, yes, please come teach in kids church. I would be like, is there nursery? put me in nursery with the baby. Like I am opposite you, Heidi. Like I will go sit in the nursery with crying babies. I will soothe them. I will show up wow. for them. Like I will hold you till you're like slobbering on my sweater, but like, do not put me in the kids church because if you do, I'm going to be like, hi guys. All right. Your, your kid's pastor is probably like, I'm, I'm recruiting you this Sunday. <laughs> you want that. There's always a need. Okay. So to wrap up this conversation, which I've so loved out of the estimated 600,000 words and the whole English dictionary, there was one word for you. Mm -hmm. that you said has changed your life in the beginning and continues to change your Mm -hmm. life today. And I would love for you to tell us all, what is that one word and what it means for your life? Yes. 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 I would love to tell you. Yes. I would love to share my story. Yes, 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 yes. Um, (laughs) Yes would be the word that has changed my life over and over again. And the right yes, I should say the yes to Jesus, because (laughs) saying that yes at five, okay, can you relate to this chatterbox story? I literally at five asked Jesus into my heart. And then the next day I was like, you know what? I'm just going to double check that. I'm just going to make sure. And so I said, yes again. And for the next seven days, I think I said yes, a few times over. Um, he heard it and you know, that yes really brought so much joy. And then you, you know, you go through life and certain things happen and you grow up and you realize life is bigger than 101 Dalmatians and butterflies on my wall. And you move on and you realize like, okay, there are some hard things in life and you choose, I chose to say yes again, you know, in my teenage years. And that was a little bit harder because there created a little bit more separation with that. Yes. All of a sudden you're not quite like every, else. You're not going on the same path as everyone else. And it, it hurts a little, still the same joy there, but you just realize there's a lot more depth, depth to that. Yes. Than there was when you were maybe five or six. And then, you know, I've had that moment again, even in college when I said yes to Jesus and again, even more separation, but I want to caveat that with what you said earlier, like so much freedom, so Mm -hmm. much life giving freedom in that separation to realize that like my yes for Jesus is putting me on a path where there is joy, where there is freedom, where there is forgiveness, yeah. where there is hope, where there is redemption, where I'm going to make mistakes, but I don't have to stay in that same cycle over and over and over again, because there is a God who yeah. will pull me out. And that doesn't mean I can make that mistake again a thousand times, but he is going to show up for me and he's going to pull me out and put me into a new cycle through his holiness and his redemption and his grace and his mercy and all the things. And so, you know, each yes carried something different. And I think even today, you know, as I say yes in what God's called me to do in motherhood, how God's called me to be a wife, is it always easy? No. Is it always, again, butterflies? No. But continuing to say yes, I mean, there's just nothing that compares. There is nothing in life that will ever hold a candle to making that choice and making that decision and then walking it out, no matter how hard the road gets. Man, is anybody else like me and throw their fists <laughs> yes. up? This is like a hyped up conversation while Sarah. Thank you so much for taking the time to help us really hone in on this lie that no filter is needed, that we can mm-hmm. spew out whatever we're feeling and thinking, yeah. but we can trade that for the truth that man, God has given us these words that we can speak and be yeah. an encouragement to build others up 
love and be such a light. And you are so that on social media. Please tell us if people have not connected with you yet, where can they find you? All the things we want to know. Yeah. <laughs> If you are on social media, you can find us at Modern Farmhouse Family, and that's really a dump of our life, our kids, our family, and we just try to share joy through all of that, um, real joy, authentic joy, not not fake, you know, made up joy. And then if you're yeah. not on social media, awesome too. We finally, you know, got our ducks in a row, and we've had a website for a few years now. That's modernfarmhousefamily.com, and we love sharing there equally. And that's a really fun spot because we have a newsletter too, and you can subscribe, and we send out monthly family emails. Kind of feels like you're part of our friends family, we say, yeah, all those places. And your book, Well Said. And my book. Get it, get it wherever it's sold, you guys. Trust me yes. when I say you will want a copy. Okay, yeah. so to end this, this episode, though, we do a lightning round of just five easy, lighthearted questions. Just like, okay. give us your knee-jerk reaction, not just whatever first comes to mind. Okay. Ty put these together, so if they're weird, oh, okay. I, I blame him. <laughs> I blame him. Okay, the first one. Had you been living in Egypt during the time of the Old Testament, which of the 10 plagues would have thrown you over? Locusts. <laughs> okay. Guess what? When Ty asked me, I said boils and he said, yeah. not the firstborn son dying. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? Well, to, to we wouldn't have made that, it that far. No, we wouldn't have made it that far. To caveat that, I forgot about that one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I kind of think of that as like, okay, Ty, you know what? You know what? Yes. And yes, I, okay. yes, yes. It gets, it gets easier. Awesome. Okay, second, second question. How many churches have you held membership at? Two. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think he was hoping for like a juicy answer. No, like, like one, you know, one at one in my childhood till I got married. Like, <laughs> one in this life. Okay, that's that's pretty in impressive. You're committed. Okay, yeah. third. Which one would you listen to, John Christ, Trey Kennedy, or Nate Bargatze? Which one's your fave? John Christ. I love it. Fourth. What percentage of Sundays are you on time for church? Oh, I'm really working on this. Are we going 2023? Or are we going my whole life? Um, I say recent. Tell okay. us where you're at. 2023, I would give myself yeah. a solid 87%. That is literally amazing. Something I've been I... working on, but you know, cause Tim nudged me. He was like, I really don't like being late. And I was like, well, that one's on me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you are looking at me. Wow. Cause I am right now the opposite of you. Like oh, put the so I need to do that. I need to get my ducks in a row. Okay. Last mm -hmm. question. Let's say you had to get a tattoo. I actually don't know if you have one, but let's say you were forced to get a tattoo today, but you had to make it Christian. What would you get? Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Okay, <laughs> what's thinking? I lit it. Wow, this is a hard one. I have to. Um, There's the oh, ankle, oh, the Jesus fish classic. Oh, okay, There's the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tell a funny story real quick after this. I'm gonna yeah. get. I'm gonna get a simple. Oh, sounds terrible. I'm not gonna get this, you guys. But I'm gonna tell you what I would in this hypothetical world of ties. I'm gonna get a simple outlined dove. There you go. Oh, that's beautiful. No, simple, outlined, no fill in, minimal pain. Minimal, minimal. <laughs> minimal. Okay, but I do have that's to legit. tell you funny yeah. story about the tattoo thing. I had a friend in college who wanted to get a tattoo to represent what Jesus had done in her life, and she decided to get the cross, and it was on yeah. her foot, and she wanted it at an angle. So when she looks yeah. down, she sees it, but when everyone else looks at it, it looks like a X. So Weird. everyone was like, why do you have an X on your foot? And she was like, oh, it's, it's a cross. Like if you, she was like, if you look at it just right, like if it, and I'm oh, like, oh, no. that one. yeah. Yeah. I think she needed the, you know, tall bit to be a little no, bit taller and the short no, bit to no. be a little. I know it's like, can you adjust, move yeah, the skin? No. Just no, tilt just... the skin. Oh, so I'm not getting terrible. across all that to say I'm not okay, getting okay, across okay, that's okay. for sure wow with that with that we can complete this conversation no I've loved talking to you Sarah thank you again for joining us yeah. on trade a lie for a truth thank you mm -hmm.